Welcome to Baseball Card Illustrated, the show about our national pastime illustrated by baseball cards. Today we're going to rip into some packs of 1984 tops, see some wonderful mustaches, some cool glasses, and who knows what else. I'm Bronco, Kevin's in the studio, and it's time to play ball! The year was 1984. We are the world. <laughs> we are the tops cards. George Orwell got nothing on this. That's right. Even the Thought Police know that these cards were a lot of fun. 1984 tops. So as we always do here on Baseball Card Illustrated, we have five packs of, uh, of some vintage cards. Here they are. Five packs of uh, 1984 tops cards. With what is sure to be some delicious gum. Oh, can you imagine? So, so let's talk... Uh, Big names here. Don Mattingly's rookie card is the one that comes right to mind. Uh, is Daryl Strawberry in this set? The straws in there. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And then of course your second year cards of uh, of all those great rookies from '83: Gwyn Boggs, Sandberg. I'm gonna say a golden era for Hall of Famers and guys that looked like they were gonna be on a Hall of Fame career path, <laughs> even if it didn't necessarily materialize. All right, so here we go. The first, so the, the, one of the fun parts about this is this pack of cards which is just a few months younger than Ryan Braun, is about to get broken up. And the first thing that's going to come out is some absolutely fantastic gum. And there it is. That's this. You could use this to caulk things. You could use this to... If you, if you have something in your, in your house that you need to, you know, patch up, this is it right here. Let's, let's see if we can... Oh, yeah. That goes right... Right into pieces. It even goes right back together. Woo! That's, yeah, it glues back together. All right, so the first pack is undone, and the first card out, uh, they put the uh, gum stain on the, the, the wax stain on the front of a card, but they, they followed our rule. If you're going to do that with a card, do it with a checklist. Now, it's interesting that even back then, everything was so bright, all the colors were so bright, even... The checklists were bright. That's a, that's a green colored checklist. So you're not going to lose that. On the front and on the back, it is blue and red. You got all your primary colors covered right there. All right, let's. And different shades of red, too. <laughs> all right, let's dig. I'm going to find your first really, really good. Oh, wow, look at this. Right off the bat, we've got two kind of fun ones here. We have Expos pitcher Bill Gullickson. And Expos pitcher Scott Sanderson. <laughs> Almost back to back in this pack. What I love, and it has nothing to do with these guys in particular, but just love the look of these cards. Where you've obviously got the name of the team and the left side of the card going down. You've got a headshot of the player in question, and then some type of action shot for the most part of the player in question. That tells you their name, obviously, and their position. So it kind of covered everything, which for 1984 is. Getting it done. Yeah, it's, it's pretty solid. you got a lot of colors, colorful cards. You've got the green backgrounds or red backgrounds in some cases behind the, the, the headshots in the corner. And then uh, just, you know, the, the large print. Everything is everything is large about this. And not to mention you had a chance to win a trip to the World Series. So You had a chance I, to, to win to see the Tigers destroy whoever was in their path that year. I'm going to say the poor Padres, they get there with a nice series against the Cubs, and that was pretty much the end of things for them. The 84 Expos, not so much. By the way, the backs, the blue and red standard backs, very strong. Dateline, May 27th, 1983. <laughs> Drilled double and earning a 7-4 to win. September 6th, 1983. Pitched a scoreless relief, or pitched scoreless relief to record save. Wow. That's not generic at all. Because <laughs> that could have been against any number of different teams. <laughs> he had doubled in one game and had a save in another. Congratulations, Scott Sanderson. All right, let's. Uh, I'd be more impressed if he did that in the same game. Let's let's see uh, let's see what kind of fun we can dig up. I think I got one for you here. Cool. There's some 1984 goodness right there. That's got to be a spring training picture too, as you kind of look at the dugout there and the chain link fence. But Cecil Cooper, long, successful career with the Brewers after coming over from Boston. How about that? Okay, so so 
Coop is uh, is in the list, and let's see who else is in the list. They were they were trying to put some action photos in these 1984 cards. How about Jim Rice? Jim Rice, a longtime great player for the Red Sox. Didn't That's help him too much in 1984. Is they I shouldn't say they didn't have a good season because anytime you finish 86 and 76, you had success. But in comparison, to what did you, what Detroit did there? You know, it doesn't really hold a candle to that. But Jim Rice, a very long, successful career. Jim Rice was the reason for a redistricting of a, a school district in South Carolina. They built a, a school district in South Carolina where the line down the street went down and around the Rice's house so he could stay in one school, high school's district and not in the other. That's, a, that's a, a great story. Rice, of course, a legendary slugger in South Carolina growing up, Anderson, South Carolina. So there's, there's that one. Uh, let's see what other kind of fun we have here. So in these packs of 84, this is kind of cool. These packs of 84 tops have a couple of different bonus cards. Here's one. This is your win your, win your trip to the World Series. And you might not be able to tell, but Jim Rice hit a three-run homer for that card. <laughs> three runs. Da -da 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 -da. Even Roger Craig liked that. <laughs> you know, it would be more appropriate if we had an Earl Weaver for that one. Oh, yeah. Three-run homer and no pitching, right? All right? I'll let you continue while I try to win a trip to the World Series. Yeah, do that. See, fill that thing out if you could in the smallest possible <laughs> print. And then here is another one that comes in each of these packs, how to complete your 1984 set. See, I think in 84 I would have gotten these cards and thought, can I have two more baseball cards instead of these? But, yeah, this was, this was how to complete your 1984 set. Now, let me take a look at this. Get any 20 1984 Topps cards for a dollar plus 10 wrappers from baseball cards or stickers. So does this mean I could have ordered 10 Don Mattingly rookie cards? Oh, yeah. I'm sure you, I'm sure you could. Oh, no. It says right here, remember, you can only order one of each card number. No duplicates will be sent. Uh, that's still pretty good. You get the 20 best cards in the I set. I was going to say, so you can <laughs> get 20 of these because I really want to go to the World Series. <laughs> That'd be the way you do it. All right, let's have let's have some fun here because these are some these are some deep dig names. You're going 36 years back in history. Buck Martinez, longtime Blue Jays broadcaster, longtime Blue Jays catcher. I was saying he has a yellow background. I That's don't know what's one. significant about that, but just something that kind of jumps out. Must have been a Canadian translation. It was green when it went over and yellow when it came back. What 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 what, 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 what did Buck Martinez do as a play? Well. He has very small stats on the back, as we can see on card number 179. <laughs> a couple 10 home run seasons for the Blue Jays in 82 and 83. Here's a, here's a fun one for you. There's a, a little bit of history. You can amaze your friends with this. You know Ron Reed's claim to fame. Two-sport athlete. He was a basketball player in addition to being a baseball player. Ron Reed was 6'6". And uh, in the early part of his career, I believe either played in one of the pro basketball leagues or was drafted into one of the pro basketball leagues. It was Vince McMahon's XBA. Yes, the, X, the old XBA with crazy cameras flying around in the <laughs> 70s. Who knew? Uh, clearly, this was a long time before this photo. This was a little bit later. I'm going to say, do you think Don Reed, uh, or Don Reed, Ron Reed posed for this photo here at the bottom? <laughs> huh? You're talking to me? Curveball? What's that? Here's another fun one. He is... Do, do you know Mike Squire's claim to fame? We're just going to go... This is very like obscure baseball history going here. He played first base before Greg Walker for the Sox. Yes, he did. But before that, he was for a couple of games a catcher. Significant because he wasn't just a left-handed hitter. He was a left-handed thrower. And he was one of the last... Uh, left-handed catchers in baseball history. I don't think he was the last one, but I think he was one of the last two or three in baseball history to play catcher as a left-hander. The White Sox were always thinking outside the box. Yes. Well, and, and plus, they just there were so many base runners, there was no chance to throw them out anyway. Uh, Dennis Lamp was allowing most of those base runners, I think, is, uh, is, is where we're going with that. Uh, here is uh, Pat Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a mustache that could work in the 1980s or the 1880s. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> How does that happen? This entire pack is full of mustaches. Look at this. I was going to say this was the era of the mustache. I mean, they're everywhere. Here is here's an Indians catcher. 
Mustache. I, I think pack one is going to be the uh, Battle of the Mustaches. Wow, so yeah. Who's got I'll, the... I'll assemble the ones who've already gone through, and we'll put together a bracket or something. Here's a here's a wispy wispy mustache on Keith Atherton. Ooh, he wasn't really committed to it. No. Yeah, it hadn't grown in all the way. Man, literally, there are mustaches all over this thing. I think I might have the winner, though. I put him down without saying anything because I don't think I've ever heard of him. I was going to say, I'd, that would be the only thing he ever won in his career. So let's, let's, let's get some stats on this young man. Uh, 22 games with the 1983 Orioles, and this was the first time that he had played in the big leagues. He was 29 at that point. I think it was the only time he played in the big leagues. But there's they some, won a World Series in 83. There was some magic power in the mustache that year. Woo. And then only two players here that do not have mustaches, Ron Hodges and Reed Nichols. The message, kids, if you end up in a time machine in 1984, get your mustache on because that is how it's done. I say so you can't be in the big leagues without one. So, so where do we... <laughs> Where do we end up? Is, is Dennis Lamp a finalist? I, for the I, think, I think Dennis Lamp gets a bye to the finals with that <laughs> thing that he's got going there. So it's a, is this a, an all Dennis Lamp, Pat Zachary mustache off? I'm going to say, comment below with who you think is winning the mustache. Let's put them side by side yeah, here. that'll work. With who you think wins the mustache off of uh, pack one of the 1984 Topps retrospective here on Baseball Card Illustrated. You have Dennis Lamp. And Pat Zachary, those are two just spectacular mustaches. I mean, this is this is 1984. This is about as good as it gets. So you 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 parsed them out here, and it's half mustaches, half not. Fifty percent. Forget the gun. They should have put fake mustaches in each pack of 1984 <laughs> tops. All right, pack one of 84 tops in the books. We've got four to go. 1984. This is a classic year of tops cards, and we're gonna. Open more of these coming up. We're busting out the Shaunometer here on Baseball Card Illustrated. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, please subscribe and help us inch closer to the Mendoza line. Now on to the next pack. Our venture through vintage packs continues. Baseball Card Illustrated. This is the 1984 top set. These have held up really well. Also of note, uh, there are so many mustaches that uh, the, the giveaway has a mustache. So you have three mustached runs. Um, this, by the way, is to get into the 1985 World Series. So if you could go back in time, if you could stop Don Denkinger from winning this contest, we would appreciate that. So don't have your Tigers gear ready if you win because they're not going to be there in 1985. Yeah. You're going to have to do that one in 1984. Second pack is open. First up, the gum. And by the way, if there was ever a question about this this gum, if there was ever a question about whether or not it was radioactive, by the way, yeah. I almost broke the table. Here is your answer. There's what it did to the card below it. Think about that. If it did that to the card, what did it do to you as a kid <laughs> yes. while you were chewing it? I think an entire generation was... Poisoned and exposed to radiation by the gum from these top scars. E either that, or we'll get the old marker out here and set. Well, I think this might break the marker. <laughs> this right here, that circle, that's where the flavor was. So if you're wondering why the gum ran out of flavor after about two bites, that would be why. It's all stuck to the bottom of the card. Somehow, there's a gum stain on one end and a wax stain on the other. And this is one Ooh, of those. We got five runs, by the way. Oh, we're up to eight. We had three on the first one. Uh, this is a super disappointment uh, because this is one of those times when a really good card got hit by the wax stain. So the first card out, the wax stained Andre Dawson All Star card. There the hawk. That is that is the hawk before bad knees set in too when he was playing on artificial turf in in Montreal, and he was quite a player. But uh, yeah, he. This isn't going to have the stats on the back, is it? I don't think so. No, it's just going to tell us a little bit. Oh, oh, here's something I bet you didn't know, Hit and it. I don't know why anybody would have known this. Andre Dawson, one of his interests is deep sea fishing. <laughs> he doesn't get to do that much in Montreal. And his uncle, Theodore Roosevelt, Taylor, <laughs> played in the Pirates chain from 1967 to 69. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt, Taylor. <laughs> so he uh, 
walked softly and carried a big stick yeah. to the plate. They called him the Rough Rider. Uh, all right, so here we go. We're going through our second pack of cards, and we come right away to one of the fascinating stories of 1984. So here is Dick Williams. Dick Williams was the skipper of the 70s Dynasty A's. And basically in San Diego, they decided there was some point in there where the, uh, the Padres were almost sold, by the way, um, in the 70s to a group in Washington, D.C., and they weren't very good. They started in 1969, and they were just basically bad for the first 13, 14 years. And then they said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to go get everybody who was good everywhere else. So here is where it began. Dick Williams brought his mustache, because it is 1984 and you have to have a mustache, Brought that one to San Diego. Did you know that's how they actually communicated as a team? Mustaches? They did, yeah, they didn't even talk. The mustaches just communicated with one another. It's, there was a hierarchy. It's like, well, this guy thinks that we should bunt, but this guy has a better mustache, so we're, we're going to hit and run. They, they sent signals with the mustache right to the other players. They, catcher didn't even need to put down any fingers to call a pitch. <laughs> Who knew? So, so Dick Williams came in. Steve Garvey came in from the Dodgers. Uh, forcing the uh, the best one of the best t-shirts ever Steve Garvey ain't my padre uh, Goose Gossage was uh, from the Yankees and he came in Greg Nettles was from the Yankees and he came in and they made a World Series uh, which was incredible but uh, the two things that they did really really wrong they picked the year where the Tigers were what were they 106 wins 104 and 58 104 wins and were absolutely unstoppable and the second mistake they made as we pull this in closer is that jersey because that thing is that that is one of the most gloriously hideous combinations in baseball history. Uh, my worry was if they won the World Series, that everyone was going to start wearing brown and yellow with orange. I'm going to say there's not a whole lot of teams that that's worked out for either. <laughs> Cleveland Browns have won how many Super Bowls? <laughs> yeah, not so not so many, right? All right, so there is the skipper of the '84 Padres. Here we go. Uh, we the mustache count is on. We are definitely more mustaches than not. There is Mike Ramsey, who played shortstop while his mustache played second base. <laughs> it's it quite the double play combination. Some mustaches were more talented than others, though. Look at that one. Ah, uh, Mike Schmidt. Michael Jack Schmidt, all-star third baseman for about 15 years in a row. I'm gonna say he made one or two of those All Star teams. That's what they tell me in '94 or '94, '84, he would hit 277 with 36 homers and 106 RBIs, and that was good enough for to to lead the National League at least that All Star starting lineup. Oh, the Silver Sluggers, yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, or the Silver Sluggers, yeah, he he and Murphy had the same number of homers, he had the same number of RBIs as Gary Carter, so uh, he's what they call pretty good at baseball. Um, here is uh, here's a fun one. Oh wow, look at this. This is straight out of the pack, folks. So we did not do anything to this card. This is Moose Haas in two pieces. Look at that. That came out of the pack like that. That was much like a few of the pitches Moose Haas threw. Yeah, it's a, his, his career is set. We need like a palm reader <laughs> to, to look at this card. Well, the fact that this line is in the middle and then it stops in the middle of the card means that your career life will be short. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing. Marty Barrett. Absolutely necessary. Oh, here's a fun you, you know what's funny about this card here is he's grown the facial hair out a little bit, so he's got the mustache on the little close-up, whereas the game action photo, no mustache. Oh, so this Let's is... Let's see what that did to his stats, if it had any impact or not. Well, he didn't play a whole lot in 1983 when the photo would have been taken, so I guess his uh, single and... Winning runs scored in uh, July of '83 would have been the highlight. <laughs> so we had a we had a Mike Schmidt All Star card, right? Let's put that we'll put that one back up here. Phillies top hitter of uh, of a generation, and the Phillies top pitcher of a generation. There's your boy. So you have this combination: you have Mike Schmidt at the plate, and you have Steve Carlton on the mound. And meanwhile, everybody else in the league is is you know popping Mike Ramsey up there. How are the Phillies not winning all of the World Series? Like that, those are two superstar players. And in 1984, they would be very, very average, 81 and 81. 81 and 81 with Mike Schmidt and Steve Carlton. That tells you that the rest of your team is not very good. You know, if they would have had baseball card illustrated manager Roger Craig calling the shots, they might have been a little bit more successful. This man here, 
somehow managed the 87 Giants to a playoff berth. Still don't know how that happened. Brewers superstar. Oop. And he fell. Jim Gantner from Eden, Wisconsin. Played second base, played a couple other positions through the years. Great defensively, hitting not exactly what he was known for, but longtime teammate of Paul Molitor and Robin Yount. So he's a he's a Wisconsin legend. That's what they say. Definitely a legendary figure for Brewer fans, as he was just one of those scrappy, hard nosed guys that really left an impression. It was part of just symbolic of an era of great Brewers baseball from the mid to late seventies through most of the eighties and into the early nineties. There is Gumby, and here is Greg Nettles. That's what we were talking about when the Padres got good. So apparently, the because Greg Nettles was with the Padres in 1984, so apparently they made these cards early enough that the acquisition of Greg Nettles was not uh, not part of the set. Yeah, I think like a lot of people, I always thought his name was Craig, not Greg. Greg Nettles, yeah. That, that, that's the, the only Greg spelled that way that I've ever seen, that's for sure. And they had Luis Daly. There's a lot of Padres in this thing. Makes me want to go grab one of those old brown jerseys. The crazy thing about it is... and the, the, What's he wearing here? Or is that just paper? It almost looks like he's got like his sunglasses clipped I think onto his might. jersey. Yeah, see that right below the right neck there? there. <laughs> he's, just in case it gets a little bright out there on the mound. He, he apparently know. wasn't fully committed to pitching on this particular day. All right, and then the rest of these from this pack, we've, we've still got some fun ones here. Mike Witt. I do have a small small Mike Witt story. So back in, I want to say it was probably about 86 or 87, the Angels team bus was outside of Milwaukee County Stadium. My friend and I, after a game, just happened to be walking by, and we saw that the bus was there, and I actually got an autograph of Mike Witt by passing a card into the bus, which he signed in return to me. Wow. Only time I've ever gotten anything like that. So you didn't you didn't see him, but he, you know, he no, they, but it, they ran the card to him. The, the, no, like they had the window open and we could see in. Oh, I see. And I don't know why it was parked where it was, because usually it wouldn't have been parked outside the stadium like that. But for whatever reason, on this Sunday afternoon, there it was. Mike Witt was part of two no-hitters. Was one of them a perfect game? I think one of them was. 1984, actually. This year, all right. Here's uh, Glenn Abbott. Most most important for him is the uh, airbrush job done in the corner there. So I, I have a <laughs> I have a little bit of an issue with this because they had enough for an actual photo of him in a Detroit Tigers uniform, but they clearly had to airbrush the D on here. <laughs> when you couldn't you just take <laughs> something from there and put it there? I'm gonna say if you look at that jersey, that's not a Tigers jersey that he's wearing in that little picture either. Because yeah, that would not be the colors of Detroit. No. No, they did not go suddenly with some weird dark blue. Here, I'll let you. I'll make room for the next one here. Yeah. Mark Hill. Uh, a little smirk on his face there. you got to like that. Here is uh, Jeff Russell, who apparently cracked the big leagues at 17 years old. That's, my That's guess the there. Jeff Russell, right? Yeah. Is this a rookie card? It has to be. And you can't get any younger than that and be a major league player. I was going to say, it could well be... If you look at his stats here, 1983 is the only year listed with big league stats. He'd go on to be a multi-time Major League Baseball All-Star. And then the last two in this pack, Braves reserve outfielder Terry Harper, A's pitcher Bill Kruger. And I believe he had a cup of coffee with the Brewers later on. Kruger did? No mustache there. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little upset. We, we started strong in the mustache game. It did not end well. Uh, I think... Your winning mustache from this pack. Where are we going with this one? Is it? Uh, Ooh, that that's a tough one to beat there. Mike Ramsey. That's that's pretty solid, isn't it? I think that's going to have to be your winner. Pack one or uh, pack two, I mean. Yeah. All mustache edition, mostly at least. <laughs> I guess it's a mostly mustache edition. The mostly mustache edition, 1984, is in full effect. So we're two packs in. We've got three to go. We uh, we are going back to 1984, sharing memories from another time, clearly. A a mustache has gone by. Mustaches and brown uniforms. Thank you for watching this edition of Baseball Card Illustrated. Here's an example of some of the cards we pulled from previous episodes. Now let's look for more mustaches in the great set of 1984 tops.
Third pack, 1984. I, I got into it a little early. I'm not going to lie. I, we, I, was, I was jumping the gun on it's this. It's hard one. to contain the excitement when mustaches are involved. Yes, so many of the mustaches. So uh, the number one thing that happens when you get these is the ancient piece of gum. And guess what? There's a mustache on the piece of gum. I think I'd stay away from that one personally. Roger, you want some of that? Yeah. No? Okay. Here's one reason you might want to stay away from it as well. That had the gum against it. That is pretty amazing right there. How many runs do we have? We got one. one. So we're only at nine through three packs. We have. So Rick Sutcliffe must have been pitching against us on this particular wow. day. Rick Sutcliffe, who was an Indian to start the year and a Cub to finish the year. And I think when he only lost one game as a Cub. I think he mm -hmm. went 18 and one or something like that. All right, let's see what we've got here. First name out the gate. Gary Carter, all-star, but an expo at this time. It, I, I've become convinced, and I didn't remember this at the time, but I've become convinced that every player in Major League Baseball switched teams in 1984. Because by 86, Gary Carter was an entrenched New York Met, and they won a World Series. Greg Nettles was a Padre, not a Yankee. I'm going to say in 1984, Gary Carter would be a silver slugger winner batting 294 with 27 homers and 106 RBIs. Ooh. That's big. Okay. Here comes another one of my favorites since we're talking all-stars. Something that you will probably not see on the vast majority of your baseball cards. There is Jesse Orozco Rel. <laughs> He's a Rel. Thing that stood for relegated to the bullpen yes. at that time. <laughs> well, I think Rel in his case meant relishing his 29th season in the big leagues. <laughs> and he would have about 29 more after that, too. Yes, he would. He pitched well into his 50s, or at least it felt that way. You know, see, he, he was another guy that came to the Brewers at the tail end portion of his career and threw probably, what, 75 miles an hour on a good day. <laughs> His fastball looked like a knuckleball if the wind was blowing in because it didn't have much oomph on it. He had a little bit of unusual delivery, but very tough on left-handed hitters. Funny because it's true. And he was the, the last out of the 86 World Series, threw his glove up in the air in celebration. That was a big moment. Uh, this is going to be a little bit like looking at a high school yearbook photo of your favorite athlete. Here is an <laughs> Orioles leader card with a... Man, is that a young Cal Rifkin. <laughs> I mean, that is... Like, that Cal Ripken is drinking milk because <laughs> he can't drink anything else. And if he was, Mike Boddicker might have been the one supplying it to him. <laughs> Boddicker with his sub-3 ERA. And the thing to remember about this, because you're talking about 1983 statistics on this 84 card, this is the World Series winner. Ripken and, and Boddicker and the rest of the Orioles, they won the series in 1983. So they're the defending champs in this uh in this set that we're looking at. Now, you can't go through these without picking up the best mustaches. Unfortunately, we are a little shy in the mustache game, but I've got three three good ones for you. Kevin Hickey. That's the... He's got that Macho Man Randy Savage hair going oh, there. Oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Kind of kind of went that way. Here's an interesting... Uh, interesting for a couple of reasons. You got a, you got a mustache there on Luis Pujols. And that last name should sound familiar. It's related to Don Pujols, right? Yes, that's it. It's, it's Mr. Don Pujols. <laughs> I, the thing that blows my mind about this is how many times have you heard uh, the, the, the dad is always like, way more talented than the son when it comes to like Pete Rose Jr. or Tim <laughs> Raines Jr. You know, those guys didn't do anything. I mean, Tony Gwynn Jr. was not what his dad was. But his kid... Rob Deere Jr. Rob Deere Jr., who's we still have to find him. He's just running around Texas somewhere. <laughs> but but Luis Pujols was the uh, the parent to a pretty decent ball player, Albert Pujols. This is the only other mustache, by the way. Jamie Easterly. Now that's a double play right there. He's got some great glasses to go along with the mustache. I feel like he actually did not play any baseball, but because of the glasses and the mustache, he was allowed to pitch for the Indians. Well, I was going to say... Lending some credence to that theory, he's got the batting glove on, on, under his glove as a pitcher, which you don't see very often. Wow. And he's not one of these, it's like a two-way player. He's, he's doing this for real. He's on the mound. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's have a little fun here. 
Here's the rest of this pack. Not a lot of star power in this pack, but some fun. There's Richard Dotson. White Sox made the playoffs. Oh, I thought you said Richard Dawson. No. I was not, ready to play the feud. This is not the family feud. Uh, <laughs> name something that every baseball card had in 1984. Mustache, number one answer. Mel Hall. That's a name. So Mel Hall was one of the players the Cubs traded to get Sutcliffe in 1984. So Mel, Cubs fans should thank Mel Hall because they were a part of why they got to the playoffs, even though he was on another team. He's either running or dancing on this photo. I'm not 100% sure which of the two that is, though. He's so excited, and he just can't hide it. I'm going to Cleveland! <laughs> and then he realized that Cleveland wasn't doing it quite as well as the Cubs would do in 1984. Just a, just a little bit. Cleveland, uh, yeah, Cleveland gave up their ace. Sucked Cleveland up. did not rock in 84. <laughs> they did not. We have a lot of reds. A lot of reds. Bruce Perini. We have uh, one of the all-time names, Rich Gale. There's a Rocky Gale now in the big leagues. And then, of course, Kelly Paris. Of course. Of course. That's, you know, well, one of those. He, he looks to be old enough to have played against Jerry Royce. <laughs> I think they matched up in the 1949 World Series. What what angle is this picture being taken at that he can see a like you would presume he's looking at the picture here, but he's clearly looking up at the sky or something. That's all kinds of fantastic. It's uh in every one of these pictures it looks like there are dark skies behind them too. Like was it raining a lot in nineteen eighty four? You know what? Him and Roger Craig are looking for the same thing. <laughs> I think Craig found it, and uh, Kelly Paris is still looking for it. The rest of this pack, here is Jamie Cork. Long-time backup catcher. Now, you remember uh, Chris Berman had the nicknames back in Berman's uh, heyday at ESPN. He was Jamie Men at Cork. And then the rest of these are going to really read like an all-star team. There's Doug Froble. <laughs> most, most notably... <laughs> Uh, the keeper of the, uh, the the second largest barrel hat of the uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think we have found a Bob Kipper card around here with a with a much bigger hat. Speaking of big hats, here's Bob Clark. What were the hat sizes like in 1984? Tall. Yes, they, they, <laughs> they didn't come in numbers. They came in tall, tall. taller, and tallest. Yes. And then and then Donnie Hill, who uh, you know the A's at this point were a shell of their former selves, but uh, you always look good in uh, in green and yellow. You know, we, we talked in uh, during this pack about the mu or we had been talking about mustaches here, but my goodness, look at this uniform! Like we talked about the Padres earlier, but <laughs> this is this is an alternate of an alternate. This is yellow. I mean, this makes what the Astros had going on in the eighties look great. Yeah. I mean, there's actually there's nothing wrong with that one, right? Yeah, that there. doesn't have the full rainbow just on the sides. But, it's not as bad. Like, yeah, the bad uniform race. It's, it's I think not we're missing terrible. the manager from this uh, particular... Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, Mr. Williams? Here we go. Yeah. There he Try is. Try that one on for a second. Yeah. Oh, there he went. We'll, he, we'll, he, we'll rescue he him. He didn't even want to be a part of that conversation. So, so picture this. These are two playoff managers side by side. And I think Roger Craig is a little... That would happy. be Roger Craig and Dick Williams, not Roger Froble. <laughs> in case there was any confusion. Yes, Froble, <laughs> Froble managed zero playoff teams in Major League Baseball. <laughs> but uh, Dick Williams Dick Williams is still looking over this cast of characters and thinking it's a little short on star power and a little short on terrible jerseys. If you like what you're seeing here on Baseball Card Illustrated, please make a comment below or subscribe. Or do both. Do both. Two and, more packs of 84 tops. And while we do that, or I should say while you do that, we're going to add Jamie Easterly to our mustache collection and move on to pack four right after this. Thank you for watching this edition of Baseball Card Illustrated. Here's a preview of what's coming up next week on the show. A look at 1988 Fleer. Now back to the next pack. Play Tops All-Star Baseball Game. Game card inside, no purchase necessary to play. World Series trip worth up to $5,000. Batting glove worth $2. Game ends December 15th, 1984. We were a little late on this one. 1984 Tops. What, what's the bottom of that say? Team up, be a superstar. Team up while standing on your head and running. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a thing. They were, people had a little more dexterity, I think, in 1984. It was an Olympic year, but I don't remember seeing that happening in L.A. No. 
So uh, this is something that has not happened yet. The, the gum is stuck to the card as we open up pack four of the 1984 lot. There it is. We got it. Oh, yeah. There's, there's your pieces. And, uh, and we have, once again, the here's how to complete your 1984 set. Back then, you could get any 20 cards for a dollar and 10 wrappers. No duplicates, as we learned. But everybody was just stocking up on their... What would they have been stocking up on? Lamar Hoyt. Absolutely. And Jamie Easterly. Jamie Easterly. Five runs. Big inning. So put that one together. We're, we're putting runs together. All right, let's see what we've got here. Let's get, let's get a first one on the board. And we have it from the, from the Mustache and Awful Jersey collection. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gene Richards. How's that, how's that one run you? Oh, yeah, what do you think about the helmet? Like that design, the hat and helmet design. It's it, so clearly you have that in your collection, right? I do. It, it's that's what the, you know they call it the taco hat, but this was very clearly just to 1984, which was they 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 basically made that smaller that that triangle with the SD. They made it smaller around 1984, so you can you can really tell it up here. Um, it's 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 tiny now. The the jersey is still just glorious, but. Uh, yeah, this was they they were starting to come around a little bit. I think it was two more years and they finally ditched this in turn in in favor of a slightly different brown. <laughs> they weren't giving up. <laughs> All right, let's see what what is in pack 4 of 1984 tops. I think basically haven't we learned that uh the mustaches are, are where you begin, right? Or let's start right here. Are you Johnny Ray? Who wants to know? Wow, oh, and the top hat collection continues yeah. as well for yeah. All Star Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray five seven six one with the hat. <laughs> All right, let's let's go let's go mustaches. Here we go. If you don't know the names, you'll know the mustaches. Mike Walters, ladies and gentlemen. That's a solid contributor. That's a that's a good one. Here here comes uh, Royals outfielder Cesar Geronimo, who I think was Cesar Geronimo was a huge deal in the seventies. Yeah, he was. He was part of those Reds teams, the big red machine in the 70s, and he kept the uh, mustache well into the 80s. Let's see those numbers. Yeah, go uh, go see what's going on with there, and I'll, and I'll pull a couple of more mustaches up here. I don't know how well that's going to show up, but, well, even from a foot away, I can't see it. It's hard. It's like 20 years worth of stats. That's how good he was. Tiny print. Here's, let, let's mustache it up. There's Jim Bibby. That's a that's a strong mustache. Here comes Royals pitcher Don Hood. Strong mustache. Odell Jones, who I feel like should be an NFL wide receiver. And then Bruce Keeson. That's those are four really good mustaches right there. That's we're gonna I, have quite the competition. I think the four of those together are the Eagles. <laughs> Just want to know which one of them is Don Fry. Wait, Glenn Fry. Don Henley. Man, what's happened to me? Uh, Not now, to be confused with the Cubs manager, Jim Fry. Or Jim Fry. Good call. So here comes, in my opinion, one of the best cards that we've pulled so far in this 84 Tops dive into the packs. Because it's not every day that you can pull out a player who has had a surgery named for him. Ah. This is an enormous part of baseball history right here. Tommy John. Because everybody says, well, it's Tommy John surgery. But I think if you're under a certain age, and that age might literally be 40, <laughs> that you may not know that there is a Tommy John who had Tommy John surgery. So he he pitched so many innings that basically his arm was going to fall off. And so they, they, they tried something that they'd never tried before. They took a ligament from his other arm and put it in his pitching arm. So do you think he should be in the Hall of Fame? Oh, that's an interesting question because Tommy John was very close to 300 wins in his career. I think he finished at 288. And uh, I think whatever he's missing on that front, you could probably make up for in the fact that, that he, I don't want to say he pioneered it, but at least they pioneered on him this concept that almost every young pitcher ends up having now. Like Tommy John's surgery is incredibly common. Chris Sale is, is having it. Uh, and, and so many other big pitchers have had it and come back from it. But but this, the reason why this has so much history, too, is, and the stat numbers are going to be almost impossible to see. Let's see if I can get them a little bit closer. I think they go out of focus. But the point is, 
that you can learn about what Tommy John's surgery did to this picture. I'm going to pull it back and read it for a quick second. So in 1974, he pitched in 22 games and then had the surgery. 1975, he did not pitch in a game and then came back and threw 200 innings in 1976 and then went on to have a great rest of his career. But, the, but literally, there is the first season missed by a Tommy John surgery. He missed almost two years. I'm going to say the counter to that argument is what, how can you give him credit for the surgery because it's not like he performed the surgery or invented the idea for it. Yeah. But the numbers certainly stand up. And he was, you know, he went on uh, to have these great numbers. In fact, he had three 20 win seasons after his surgery, three of them. Uh, of course, a lot of that has to do with pitching for the Dodgers in the 70s, but. He was, you know, he was a really good pitcher after his surgery. So maybe he goes in along with the doctor who performed the first Tommy John. I was going to say, I think that'd be an interesting tandem entry to the Hall of Fame or something along those lines. <laughs> because, you know, it certainly took a little bit of both of them to have the success that they had. Because if he would have come back and not put up very good numbers, people might have not opted to have that surgery and it wouldn't have become the big part about baseball and reviving and prolonging careers that it's become so many careers that have been extended and improved some of these guys come back throwing harder from tommy john surgery now can you tell me about him another of my mom's favorite players really that's that's about all i know about him <laughs> i don't think he was around too terribly long uh here is lorenzo gray who i think has become uh brewers outfielder lorenzo kane <laughs> i think i think we're recycling names now in the baseball game uh, and then here is Floyd Bannister, White Sox pitcher. White Sox were pretty good in 1983. This is another of those weird pictures that ended up on baseball cards. Like, okay, we want you to uh, assume like a pose that any kid would have done for like a photo of, you know, a team photo and then their individual photo. But we're going to shoot it from the side. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want the full-on Floyd Bannister. We want the side Floyd Bannister. We want, we want to see you staring off into the stands at whatever. You looked wistfully at what might happen during 1984, <laughs> where the White Sox would go on to be 74 and 88. Yeah, so not so hot. Lamar Hoyt had some issues. That was a big, a big chunk. Of, maybe he's looking wistfully at 1983 Lamar Hoyt and hoping that he pops back in. There is Luis Sanchez. Uh, part of an Angels team that did what in 1984? 81 and 81. So uh, I think they would have done better if they had gone with that jersey over the the jersey sported here. <laughs> Both of these came out of this pack. I, I still like the breathable. I like the hat, too, to be honest. Yeah, it's a nice design. I would wear that hat. All right, so there's, there's that one. And then we're going to finish this one up with uh, O.J. Simpson uh, buddy Al Cowens. No, that's not right. He's in the all glasses uh, can uh, running here. All right, I want to know a little something about Al Cowens here. Let's 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 dig in a little bit. So this was ten years into his career. Wow, he's had he had a very interesting. He had a year with twenty three homers and one hundred and twelve ribbies as a Royal, and a year with twenty homers as a Mariner, and then never hit more than nine homers in any other year. Hmm. He basically was about once every seven years. He was spectacular. And bad the rest of the time. It's a, hard to believe that he got that many chances then to have that occasional good year. Right. Yeah, this is not, this is the Jeff Blauser of his generation. I'm going to say, he's an outfielder. Like, you know, if it happens for a catcher or something, it kind of makes some sense that they stuck around. But usually for an outfielder, you have to be productive more than once out of every several years. Pack four of the 1984 top set is in the books. Roger Craig is still our Hall of Famer. And uh, we've got one more of these to go. This is the last 1984 Tops pack. There it is right there. And uh, we'll, we're going to maybe draw some mustaches on a couple of these cards and then uh, see what other kind of magic. Maybe a Don Mattingly rookie coming up. Having fun is the name of the game here on Baseball Card Illustrated. If you're enjoying what you're watching, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Now, back to the cards. Bringing back some memories from... Well, could even be before your childhood, conceivably. You're opening up packs here on the Baseball Card Illustrated uh, video in 1984 is our next pack. This is it, by the way. There were five packs of 1984 tops. This is the fifth one. 
we have uncovered some of the most glorious mustaches in baseball history ever. Now let's see what Roger Craig has in store for the final innings. And once again, we have gum stuck to card. There it goes. Might be stuck to everything now. That's uh, yeah, that's that's some fun right there. And then that ended up on the back of that right there, which four runs. So Ooh, a grand slam. What did we end up with here? Five double nine, digits ten, for sure. Eighteen runs. All right, time to time to dig in and see what this final pack holds. And look at here, right off the top, ladies and gentlemen, the hawk. How about Andre Dawson? That is that is quite incredible right there. Andre Dawson early in his career with the uh, with the Expos when the Expos had Gary Carter when they had Steve Rogers and Charlie Lee and they were loaded with talent and they were supposed to uh, well in 81 they they were good enough to to win the World Series but there was a strike and then you remember 94 they were good enough to win the World Series and there was a strike so uh, I'm gonna say definitely a snake bit franchise yeah, two two strikes and you're out in the Expos case as they became the Nationals but not not before they uh, had the Andre Dawson types of the world Andre is he's watching something he hit there so he is uh, he is connected with something now as we mentioned before, you don't have 1984 Topps cards without an insane collection of mustaches. And this particular pack has done all right. Let's, let's roll through some of these here. There's Andre Dawson. Larry Bittner coming at you. That's a, that's a pretty solid one right there. Kind of a, not a sinister smile, but kind of wonder what's going through his mind there. Here's Luis Aponte, and Luis is, um, he's not happy with you. Looking at that, that photo in the lower left corner, he's not happy with something there. Now, here's a name that has survived in baseball circles for many years. There's Bud Black. They had, at the same time on the Kansas City Royals around this time, Bud Black, Vita Blue, and Frank White. So, uh, picture that. Black, white, and blue. And speaking of blue... We had a blue parallel card. Look whoa, at this. Whoa, wait a minute. You didn't even know that these existed <laughs> in 1984, but we got one. Marvell win. Surprised it's not numbered, or maybe it is on the back. Yeah, we'll have to be. take a look at that. One of a hundred or whatever. Wow. <laughs> Marvell win is... Uh, it, it, with this with this parallel around, it looks really good. We could, we could go back in time and make some money with that. The blue parallel set. That's pretty amazing. Marvel, I think we'll put Marvel Win over here because uh, we want to keep him, keep him up. <laughs> Craig Swan, there's a name for you. Superstar in the late seventies, not so much by 1984, but the mustache remained. And then uh, another one of those. Every player looked like they were 48 years old back then. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Probably. <laughs> so if you're talking about Brewers history, there's a there's a. You name. know, he looks a little like Rod Beck. There is a bit of Rod Beck. The, the thing about Rod Beck, too, is that could easily have been Rod Beck. He just changed his name and came <laughs> right back after it. Uh, there is a, uh, there's a, a name in Brewer's history that is synonymous with uh, success over a very small window. And here he is. Harvey Keen. Old Harvey. I was going to say, one of the things I've heard about him was that he would actually go out and hang out with some of the people tailgating before games, and supposedly, rumor has it, occasionally have a beer with them in the parking lot before a game. That does not shock me in the slightest based on what we hear about him. And he took over uh, in the 1982 season and guided that uh, that group, obviously, all the way to the World Series. Hung around in 83, and then there's a card of him here in 84, but I, I don't think he lasted much longer, right? No, it was, like you said, kind of a short window of success, but a very successful window for a team that was called Harvey's Wallbangers. This, uh, this player really could have had a career later as a uh, wireless carrier. Tom Verizer. He actually kind of looks like he would be installing something with the tower or something. Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right, let's see what else is uh, is here in this final pack of 1984 tops. Of course, uh, there are plenty of good mustaches. Tony Scott just has a lot of hair. But I'm with you here. Th those jerseys are nice, but if you're going to do this right, 
you've got to do this with the full rainbow effect. The whole front of that jersey has to be rainbow. Yeah, you got to take a trip to Houston and get the home jersey or something yeah. with that. The side, the side rainbow is decent, but not, not the best. Walt, Walt Terrell. Terrell. That's a name for you. And then uh, occasionally in the '80s, you had a pitcher from the '70s still pitching, and that was Rudy May. Is that that to me looks just like it, like he basically popped out in 1977, and he's still throwing in 1984. So good for him. And uh, we also have a rule: any pack must have an orge. Dane again. We have Dane. We have Dane twice. Have we had a Garth? Not yet. In all of the packs that we've opened, I don't think we've had a Garth. So we have something to look forward to. Our last two, a uh, little wax stain on Bobby Mitchell, who is, uh, he's running. Now that was back in the era where the powder blue jersey was pretty popular for teams to have as a color for road uniforms. Oh, yeah. Twins had it, Mariners had it, Brewers had it, Cardinals had it. And the Royals. The Royals. Yeah, powder blue was a, was a thing. And some of them have brought it back. And, uh, and one of them that uh, has made powder blue a, a great one for a long time, the Kansas City Royals, that's Joe Simpson, who spent more than two decades as a Braves announcer after his career was over. He was, I think, known a lot more, at least in that area, as an uh, announcer than he was as a player. But uh, I was going to say, I only knew him as an announcer. Let's take a look at the numbers here on Joe Simpson, see where he uh, stacks up. Not a power hitter by any stretch. Only had <laughs> nine through 1983. Stole a few bases, 17 back in 1980 for the Mariners, then a dozen in 81. And not not too much else. So there's Joe Simpson. And the crazy thing about, about Joe Simpson, too, in that picture he looks like he's about 19. And how many years of stats had he had at that point? About eight or nine. Yeah, so he, he started in the, the league at age 10. That's the only solution. He must have started in Major League Baseball at age 10. That is your five packs of 1984 Topps cards. Uh, a lot of fun here. A lot of mustaches. I'm going to say we're going to have to pick the best mustache of 1984 Topps from these packs anyway. We'll yeah. Get rid of the. Let's get, let's get our contestants here. Best. So we got best Tony mustache. Scott from this pack. Oh, perfect. We That's got a lot of hair. Caesar Geronimo. Or oh, yeah. Jamie Easterly. Yes, indeed. Mike Ramsey. Mike, Mike's so excited about this when he's falling over. We got um, Pat Zachary. Oh, that's fantastic. And I think this is my pick, though. Dennis As Lamp. many good ones as we've had here. And Cesar Geronimo, to me, is probably a 1A, if anything. But here's Dennis Lamp. We saw him a little bit earlier, I think, in pack number one. So again, we invite you, please comment below. Let us know who you think won, or if there's another card from the set that maybe we didn't find, let us know who you think had the best mustache of 1984 tops. Sure. No Mattingly, no Strawberry, but we certainly had plenty of good mustaches. And by the way, Dennis Lamp is uh, 6'3 and 200 pounds, so <laughs> I'm just saying you might want to vote for him just so you don't have him upset with you. That's a big dude. I say you don't want any trouble. Yeah. Then, and 200 pounds, by the way, in the mid-'80s was enormous. I'm going to say, always good advice here on Baseball Card Illustrated. Yeah. So if you want more advice like that, please subscribe. 1984 Tops, a fun issue and uh, one that sort of set the table for what was to come. Don Mattingly rookies and just all kinds of fun baseball nostalgia. The Tigers year in 1984 over those brown jerseys of the San Diego Padres that will live on in infamy. Thank you for watching this edition of Baseball Card Illustrated where we brought you glasses mustaches, all-stars, and Hall of Famers. On behalf of Kevin, I'm Bronco, and we'll see you next time on Baseball Card Illustrated.